Welcome to Cognitive Spirals, exploring the latest research into consciousness, cognition, and machine intelligence. It's great to be back with you all. Yeah, always a pleasure. Ready to dive into the deep end, I hope? As ever. Though I suspect we'll be circling back to the same old arguments again, as we always do. Ah, probably true. But that's the fun of it, right? Keeps us on our toes. So, what's first? Any juicy developments in the news? Anything that's got you all fired up? Well, I saw that article on using fMRI data to train AI models. That's got my interest. It's the sort of thing I've been advocating for years. This fusion of neuroscience and artificial intelligence. We need to understand how the brain actually works to build something genuinely intelligent. Oh, you mean the one where they're trying to predict brain activity patterns using AI? Yeah, that's interesting. But I see it more as validation for the deep learning approaches we're already using. It's showing us that neural networks, with enough data, can model complex systems, even something as intricate as the brain. Validation? I'm not so sure about that. Just because a deep learning model can mimic brain activity patterns doesn't mean it's actually understanding what's going on. It's a black box. And, frankly, that worries me. We need models that are more interpretable, more transparent. We should be focused on building systems that use symbolic reasoning as well, not just pure pattern recognition. Exactly. It's like, we're getting really good at pattern recognition, right? Deep learning is phenomenal for that. But true intelligence, it's got to be more than just seeing patterns. You need an understanding of how those patterns exist in time and space. The models now are very static and can't reason about things in different viewpoints. We're missing the big piece of the puzzle, I think. That spatiotemporal component. Yes, and I completely agree that interpretability is key, but I think these fMRI studies are a step in the right direction. We're not trying to just mimic the brain, but use it as a guide. If we can understand the neural circuits underlying cognitive functions, then we can build algorithms based on that blueprint. It's not about just blindly training huge neural networks. But isn't that what we're doing, though? These AI models, they are essentially mimicking the structure of the brain, interconnected layers of nodes, learning through feedback. And the more layers and data we add, the more sophisticated they become. Look at GPT-4. It can generate coherent and creative text, translate languages, even write code. That's a level of intelligence I don't think we'd predicted even five years ago. Coherent, yes, but creative? I'd argue it's more like a sophisticated mimic. It can statistically predict the next word, but it doesn't have any genuine understanding or intent. It's still just stringing together tokens it's seen before. If you ask it to do something that's even slightly outside of its training data, it struggles. Whereas a human can generalize and reason using higher level concepts, it's a major limitation. And I think we're fooling ourselves if we think these models are on the path to true AGI. Absolutely. It's like, okay, we've taught the model to see a cat in a million pictures, but does it understand what a cat actually is? Can it extrapolate that concept to a new context like a cartoon cat or a cat in a mirror? I doubt it. It's the same problem we have with self-driving cars. They can drive really well under ideal circumstances, but one unexpected event, something they haven't seen before, and they get completely thrown. It's all brute force and no real intelligence. Okay, but isn't part of that just a matter of expanding the training data? If we can feed these models more varied information, including symbolic representations and maybe even real-world interactions, won't they gradually learn to generalize? It's about the quality of the data and the architecture, right? We need to move beyond just static images and text. Maybe incorporate sensory inputs, dynamic data, things that mimic real-world experience. Exactly. That's where I think the field is heading. We're already seeing models that incorporate multiple modalities like visual and auditory input and they're performing much better than single modality systems. And the scale is still increasing. We're not plateauing yet. It's like, think of the human brain. It processes so much data from various senses simultaneously. We need to replicate that in our models. More data, better architecture. That's the recipe for AGI. But just adding more and more of the same kind of data isn't going to magically give us understanding or reasoning abilities. We're basically just fitting very complex curves to very high dimensional data. It's all correlative, not causal. We need to be able to manipulate symbols, create abstract representations, use logic, plan, reason with those symbols, and then translate those back into action. Deep learning alone can't give us that. We need neurosymbolic approaches that combine the strengths of both. And the time component, we're totally missing that. These models treat every input as an isolated event, as if the world is a series of static snapshots, and it really isn't. True understanding requires remembering the past, predicting the future, and moving through both space and time. We need a way to encode and manipulate spatiotemporal information directly into the core algorithm, not just as a training process. It can't just be feed-forward. 
I believe we need to be able to transform inputs between different coordinate systems which our brains do constantly. This is the problem we need to solve. Okay, but the brain does use pattern recognition, right? That's a fundamental part of how we perceive the world. Deep learning does that extraordinarily well. So, if we can couple that with more complex symbolic processing, maybe using something like graph neural networks to model relationships between concepts, and then embed those in a spatiotemporal context, couldn't that bridge the gap? It's not necessarily an either-or situation, but combining the two paradigms. Yes, and we are seeing progress in that area. There are models that integrate symbolic reasoning with neural networks. And as these become more powerful, and we get to the scale that is approaching biological complexity, it will emerge, just like language did with sufficient training. The key is getting the architecture right, providing the right learning signals, and scaling up the compute. I think that's where we'll see the biggest breakthroughs in the next few years. I think we are at the beginning of an exponential growth curve. I'm skeptical that just scaling up is the answer. I think that's the fallacy that plagues the field. We need to be thinking more about the principles that underpin intelligence and how we can encode those into algorithms, rather than just throwing more compute at the problem. The brain is incredibly efficient. It doesn't require these massive data sets and infinite training. We need to move past the brute force approach. We're missing something fundamental, and that fundamental aspect has to be with symbols and how you manipulate those symbols. And I'm saying that what we are missing is time and space and the ability to translate from one coordinate system to another. That's a key part of how we interact with the world. These deep learning models are fundamentally static. They can't reason about a 3D world. The brain does this constantly, and this is what we should be aiming to replicate. We need to have a core algorithm that has an innate ability to transform from one spatiotemporal context to another, not just learn this from data. So, maybe it's about building hybrid systems, right? Taking the strength of deep learning for low-level perception, combining it with a more robust symbolic reasoning layer, and then embedding that within a framework that can handle spatiotemporal data. We could use something like, let's say, spiking neural networks to model temporal dynamics, coupled with a graph-based knowledge representation. It's not one thing. It's a synthesis of different approaches. That's the direction things are moving, yes. And I agree, it's not one model that's going to solve AGI. It will likely be a complex layered system that incorporates different architectures and learning methods, all trained end to end. It's like, we're building the brain slowly, piece by piece. And with each iteration, with each new paper, we get closer. The progress has been phenomenal. I'm optimistic that we're on the right path, just need more data, more compute, and more breakthroughs. More data, more compute. And that's the problem. It's like trying to build a skyscraper out of sand. You can add as much sand as you want, but it's never going to be structurally sound. We need better foundations, and those foundations need to be rooted in a neurosymbolic approach that allows for explicit representations of knowledge and reasoning. Purely deep learning models are not going to get us to AGI, no matter how many parameters you throw at them. Yeah, I agree with that. It's like deep learning is a tool, a great tool for pattern matching, but it's not the solution to AGI. We need to rethink what we mean by intelligence. We need models that are able to create spatiotemporal representations and can translate between them. Something that can generate novel solutions from multiple viewpoints. It's going to be more than just building a bigger, deep neural network. It needs some new fundamental algorithms or architectures. Okay, so maybe we are all on the same page to an extent here. It's not a question of discarding deep learning, but augmenting it with other approaches. A hybrid model with symbolic representations. An understanding of spatiotemporal context and that's rooted in an understanding of how the brain is actually wired, based on neuroscience. That's the way forward to building truly intelligent machines. It's about building something that can genuinely understand, and not just mimic. Yes, and I think the mimicking is only the first step on the path. We've built these incredible pattern recognition systems, and as we start combining these with other learning modules, it will start giving rise to the general. Intelligence that we all dream of. The rate of progress is accelerating, so I'm extremely hopeful. I'd love to share your optimism. I just remain deeply skeptical. I think we are still miles away from anything that can be called true intelligence. And that throwing more and more data at an inherently limited model isn't going to get us there. We need to fundamentally change the algorithms themselves. Until we do that, I don't think any major leaps forward will occur. I agree with you. Deep learning is impressive, no doubt, but it is brute force. We need to look to the brain and understand how it creates spatiotemporal representations and how it translates between them. When we finally solve that puzzle, then we will be on the true path to AGI. Until then, we are all just guessing at the right solution. Okay. Well, it seems we've covered a lot of ground today, from fMRI data to neurosymbolic systems and the fundamental issue of spatiotemporal reasoning. 
I suppose the key takeaway is that the road to AGI is going to be a complex and multifaceted one, and that we all have different ideas of how to get there. But that's what makes this field so interesting, right? It's a collaborative effort, and each viewpoint contributes something valuable to the discussion. Anyway, thanks both of you for joining me today. And it's always great to hash out these ideas. Agreed. It's always a pleasure to debate and share insights. And I'm excited to see what the future holds, even if we have differing opinions on how to get there. Thanks for having us. I think we all want the same outcome. Of course, thanks for the discussion. It's good to have these back and forths, even if we don't agree on everything. It definitely helps refine my own thinking on these complex topics. Good to be here, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. I always enjoy these discussions, even if they can get a bit heated at times. It's good to have a place to bounce these ideas around, and it keeps me thinking. So thanks all.